before I make any comments, do any of you have um, anything and anything to say or any questions remaining from the last um, webinar on Monday? I'm happy to take any comments or questions from that session just now. Well, while you're still thinking about the last session, I give you a reminder that we're talking about systematic reviews, which uh, are conducted in five different steps. The first step is framing the question. The next is searching the literature. The literature search is planned according to the question framed. Uh, the studies selected through the literature search are then subjected to data extraction. The extracted data are then synthesized. And then what does the extracted data mean? All of that is summarized. Uh, one way to do this summary is called grading. So these are the five steps. In today's uh, webinar, again, we are going to have 40 minute sessions with 20 minutes break in between. And uh, in the first session today, I'm going to talk about literature search. Ahead of telling you something about the literature search, ahead of telling you something about the literature search, I'm going to give you a little bit of flavor about how systematic reviews and primary studies can all go together. Uh, okay, may I just check if the voice quality is coming across okay amongst participants? Please, could you let me know? There appears to be a little bit of a noise in, in, in my sound system. So Mark says that voice appears okay. So thank you for that feedback, uh, Mark. So here is a study that uh, commenced with the idea being conceived in 1996. It completed recruitment of the 500 patients required to be randomized in 2006 and was published three years later after follow-up was completed and analysis was carried out. Uh, this is not untypical of a large multi-center trial. Ahead of the first patients being recruited into this study, um, myself and other colleagues who were planning this study had examined all the literature on the subject. And uh, <clears throat> around the same time as we submitted for ethics approval, uh, we also submitted for publication a systematic review. And this was published in due course. During the course of this recruitment of the patients, uh, another systematic review was published by the Cochrane Collaboration on the same topic a few years later. The systematic review was updated and, uh, the, and, and republished. Uh, this was before recruitment finished. Uh, a further review was published as follow-up was being completed. And ultimately after publication of this trial, an updated review, this time with individual patient data meta-analysis was published. So you can see that alongside a primary study, uh, there can be a series of systematic reviews published. 
the idea is to encourage you to think about your own work in your uh, doctoral program where you are very likely going to undertake a primary study where you're collecting data directly from patients or using data collected directly from patients. And to remind you that alongside it, do you have the opportunity to publish systematic reviews? I believe from uh, your program director, Matej, that you are expected to publish or undertake a systematic review alongside your own thesis work. At this point, I'd like to take you forward um, to conducting a search. For conducting a search, the first step is to re-examine your research question. Um, in order to take you through an example, we'll first uh, look at a little bit of an outline of how we think about conducting a search. So here we are. We have our research question. The research question may have various components. In this example, we have population or participants. Uh, the review is about the accuracy of a test or a series of tests. The things of the results of this test are compared with a reference standard test. And the study design for this type of question is called a test accuracy study. So to construct the search for this type of a question, we look at the population and the various tests, and we create search terms for it. And this uh, circle here in blue or green on your screen possibly shows the citations covered by uh, the terms uh, in various databases. And here are various tests. All of those tests are combined together using the term or. And the set of terms that includes all the tests combined with the term using and with population. So this is the general idea. And we'll cover details of this in a second. But remember, there is not just one database to cover. You have to carry out this type of a search term combination for each of the different databases that are relevant to your subject. Here, I show example of at least uh, four uh, Medline, Embes, Sinhal, and uh, Cochrane Library. Google Scholar is a search engine in addition. Once you have selected the studies, you will need also to look at the reference lists of the studies you have selected for inclusion in your review. If the journals that are relevant to your work are not included in any of these databases, then some of those, then those journals you would need to identify and manually search them. This type of search may not necessarily these days involve going to the library and physically identifying the journal sitting in a shelf. <clears throat> it may involve searching the web pages of a journal that may exist on the web, but is not captured inside these databases that you systematically search. And then searching the gray literature, for example, doctoral thesis or conference abstracts, This is uh, another challenge. And finally, you may have to contact authors directly, seeking them to give you information about any citations they know 
which have not been captured by your own search. So carrying out the second step of a systematic review, which is to carry out your literature search, is not something you can do in one afternoon. It is quite a time consuming step. It requires a strategy and it is this strategies that allows you to succeed in capturing as many of the relevant uh, citations and papers as there are that cover your research question. And before you jump into searching for primary studies, for inclusion in your planned review, search for existing reviews. I'll come back to cover this uh, in the second uh, part of uh, today, where we will look at how existing reviews need to be evaluated in order to look at whether or not your own review is required. So you will remember from yesterday that uh, we examined the title Tests for Predicting Complications of Preeclampsia Protocol for a Systematic Review. Here is a table taken from this published protocol of uh, this planned review. In this planned review, the population, the structured question has the population, pregnant women with preeclampsia. The tests are the various pieces of information we collect from history and examination and tests in the form of uh, blood chemistry, ultrasound and uh, hematology. And the outcome of interest is complications of uh, preeclampsia, which are maternal and fetal as listed here. And the design of studies that we need, that we wish to include in this uh, systematic review are test accuracy studies. So before I proceed, I just put back to you the question of whether you understand this structured question that is in front of you on your slides taken from this published protocol of a systematic review. Please uh, write in the chat or unmute your microphone to say what you want to ask or make a comment. Does anybody feel that there is a need for me to remind you about how a question is structured? Okay, so Mitya says that uh, he, he understood um, and I have explained. So I presume from this comment that uh, based on, ah, and uh, Sylvia says, yes, please. Sylvia, I didn't understand by yes, please. Do you want me to repeat something or do you mean you have understood? Please could you say that if you are un by unmuting your microphone? Uh, Sylvia, you say there is no need to re-explain. I can proceed. Is that what you mean? Okay, so let's proceed then. 
So here you can see that for the group of tests that exist, we need to construct a set of search terms or search term combination. And also for the outcome complications of preeclampsia, we may also need to, or we may need to consider constructing a search term combination. And finally, for the population, the, the additional component of the structured question, we may need to search. So the steps are, we need to identify what are the relevant search terms. Mesh or medical subject heading is uh, a descriptor for indexing term used in the Medline database. But then there are also text terms because the indexing terms are not necessarily perfectly indexed. And then there is a question of understanding how and and or are used to combine the search terms. And then there is a search strategy. And in terms of writing the paper or the chapter concerning your systematic review, this information need to be summarized within an appendix and the findings of the search presented in figure one. 